Okay, welcome back to uh, part four of this uh, tutorial. Uh, this one, this part will concentrate on uh, dimensioning this uh, feature. Uh, dimensions are actually very easy to add in AutoCAD, but the, the tricky bit is setting up a dimension style for you to use in the first place. Uh, as it once once you when you use the software straight out the box, the the dimension style isn't really suited to everyone. So I'll, I'll run through how you set up a dimension style because it's a it's a useful thing to be to know how to do. Okay, firstly you you need to check the uh, the style of text that you want to use. So you use that using the st command, short for style. So st return. Okay, and let's say we want to create a new uh, text style. We click on new, and we'll call it annotate and OK. Now don't set any height here. Make sure there's no tick on annotative. OK. We will use a different typeface though. Let's change this and I'm going to use the Verdana typeface just because I like it, that's all. OK, I've got Verdana and will set current. OK, save your changes, yes, that will do, and close. So we've created a text style which we can now use as a, for our dimensions as well. So to create a dimension style, you type in the letter D and return. OK, so we will create our own dimension style but it will be based on one that's already here. It basically adapts it. So if we click on new and we'll call this something really imaginative like dimensions and click continue. Notice we don't want this ticked. This locks your dimensions to a certain scale of drawing. Not wise really. Okay, continue okay so let's take this in 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 order let's start with the lines and I want to make the lines red okay I'm not going to change line weight to line type uh, we'll change the baseline spacing here to two extension lines I want those to be red as well okay no changes to those extend beyond dim lines let's go for two Okay, you can see the drawing changing as we change the settings. Offset from origin, you guessed it, let's go for two. Okay, so that makes a little break between the dimension and the object, which aids the kind of legibility. Okay, then we move on to symbols and arrows. Now, I'm happy enough to stay with these closed filled arrows, they're quite clear to see. Uh, Arrow size of 2.5 would be okay. Center marks, we'll use those. If we if we draw a circle, we can mark the center. Um, nothing else needs change there. Actually, we didn't we didn't change anything. Okay, then the uh, text tab. The text style wants to be annotate. Okay, so it uses the Verdana text height of 2.5 if we leave it at 2.5 then that will be that will match the text style that we put on the on the drawing that any annotation we put on so we'll keep it at 2.5 that's going to work quite well okay uh, we don't want to draw a frame around anything text placement for vertical dimensions above that's okay horizontal centered aligned with the dimension everything there is looking pretty good uh, offset from dim line is the gap between the the line and the text. So that looks a bit small. So let's maybe make that 1.5. Okay, let's give them a bit of space, pull them away there. And text alignment, you want them aligned with the dimension lines. Okay, then fitting. This is where it tries to squeeze the text into what's available. Um, either text or arrows best fit, that would be okay, we can keep that. 
Um, I think everything else is okay here apart from the overall scale. Now the, the end scale for our drawing is going to be a 1 to 5. So what we do is we set the overall scale to be 5. Okay, so if we change the drawing to a 1 to 10, we'd need to come back and tell the, the, uh, the style that it needs to change to 10 as well. Okay, and then finally we set the units. Okay, we're going to use decimal. Uh, precision of two decimal places isn't really necessary for this. The separator wants to be a full stop, i.e. a period. Okay, and rounding off of zero, that's okay. Zero suppression trailing, that's good keeps the numbers smaller. The format for angles, we're using degrees and precision. Let's add two places onto angles. And my cat's decided to go behind my monitor. If he gets an electric shock, it's his fault. Okay, and with the angles, we'll suppress trailing zeros as well makes the numbers just a bit smaller, more chance of fitting them in a small amount of space. So that's the style defined. You see it looks quite tidy in comparison to the way it did originally. Okay, um, we haven't changed the color of the text. I think I'll actually do that. So if I go back to text, I've got a text color there. I'll change that to yellow. I'll tell you what, we'll leave it white. We'll leave it uh, uh, by block. So it, because it, we won't be able to see it very easily in, in paper space. Uh, the yellow doesn't show up very well. It's very difficult to read. Just push my cat off the table there. It's getting right in the way here. Okay, so that's the dimension style created. Uh, really, you, do not, you can't do any damage with this. You can just play around and uh, redefine the style as much as you want. Okay, so this one's ready to use, and we can close it. Now I, I prefer to add my dimensions in model space. Okay, we're in model space at the moment, and that's so that they stay attached to the to the objects. If I move an object, I want the dimension to adjust accordingly. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll not try and put every single dimension on here. There's just too many to add, but we'll 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 show the sizes of the of the plates and a radius for one of the holdings there okay and we'll add a leader as well so I'll show you how you add a leader okay so adding dimensions is is relatively easy so on the annotation panel here we've got a dimensions okay I can add a linear dimension And my object snaps have switched off from previously. Okay, so if I zoom in a bit closer so we can see what's happening, I'll take a dimension from this point to this point, drag downwards, and then decide how far away I want the, the dimension to sit, and click again. Okay, you generally do not overrule the dimension text. If you do, then that dimension will not be automatically adjusted if an object changes. Okay, let's go for a, another linear dimension, this time vertical. Okay, careful positioning is important. So, corner here to end point there. Pull away, and you're trying to place the text and the dimension line so it's going to be legible, so somebody can read it. Okay, and then over to this plate, we'll add another linear dimension. Three fifty, and consistency as well. So if you generally, you know, try and keep your dimensions, you know, consistently positioned. Okay, what we'll do on this one is I'll draw a leader. Now we've got leader here. Okay, and these are drawn 
backwards. So we start with the end of the arrow and draw backwards. So I'll place it on the middle of that little green line. Okay, I'll turn ortho off for the first portion and go to here. Then I'm gonna then it's asking me for the the text that I want to place there. Okay, and what I'll do here is dimension ten millimeter thick plate. Okay, press enter and I want to close that leader now. Okay, now that leader is a bit different from a dimension leader. We may have that on the drop down here. Uh, they're kind of kind of changing that one. So look at this one instead. What I'll do is a dimensioned leader instead of using the annotation leader. So what we do is we start off with the dim, dim command. So it's D I M return and then L for leader. So L and return. So watch watch how different this one is. This one will be more suit more in line with the dimension style. Okay, so you see the arrows is the same size as this one. Put ortho back on and drag it to the side a wee bit. Now I want to write my text, so I press enter. And it should change to me entering the text. So down in the command prompt it's waiting for me to enter some text. And this will be 10 millimeter thick plate. Okay. And I think I actually indicate the width on that one, do we not? Let me just check the final drawing. Okay, and we'll add the width as well. So space 250 millimeters wide. Press return. And you see the text there is matching the same size as the dimensions. So my preference would be for a dimensioned leader instead of the annotated leader. Okay, press escape to stop the dim command and I'm going to delete this leader and leave it with the dimensioned one. Okay, the final dimension I'll put on here, a simple one. Let's just put a radius setting on this whole thing. So we'll use a radius now and all you do is click on the circle that you're wishing to identify and it's showing me there the radius is 9.5 just make sure it's legible I wouldn't leave it there because there's lines going through it let's just tilt it around so I can read it okay now those dimensions are actually on the wrong layers at the moment so if I click each of them Okay, with the leader, I have to take all the components of the leader, but the other dimensions are grouped together. And I want to put those on layer dimensions. Okay, did you notice another layer has appeared here? We didn't enter that layer at the start. It's called def points. The moment you add a dimension to a drawing, def points layer is created. And I'll try and show you what it is. It's difficult to see here, but there is a tiny little white dot where the dimensions are taken from. You can just about tell it here, and it's the dimension, it's the the def point that determines where the the size for the dimension. Okay, so dimensioning's a wee bit tricky. Uh, setting up the style is is the trick. And uh, earlier on, I said that we. Sh we want the dimension scale to match the finished drawing scale. Okay, so we've got a dim scale at the moment of 5. If I thought these were looking a bit too big, I can change the dim scale. Okay, so the command is dim scale and return. And let's say we want them to, to shrink a bit. So if we put in a, a dim scale of 3 and return, now they don't automatically change. You have to force an update. So you, you do command dim, return, and then up, which is short for update. You can grab everything in the drawing because it's only going to it's going to filter out the dimensions for you. So you grab all the dimensions, grab the whole area and return. And you notice that the 
dimensions comp all scale down by that by the factor the leader though hasn't that's the that one stays the same the leaders are a bit kind of clumsy and they're not as automatic as, as dimensions so let's undo that because I don't want to change the dim scale and that should do it right uh, We'll pause it there because that's been 15 minutes of talking about dimensions and then we'll go into the final part of the, uh, the tutorial setting up the layout.